a human race whenever they don't understand anything they say that thing is a mysterious thing they say we can't understand that that's a uh, magic that is a some kind of a taboo so it is termed as a occult there is a misconception because uh, people think it's a mystery we can't understand it very few people can access it but people have to understand everything can be proven by the science or by the logical thinking after a proper study witchcraft is accessing your inner energy and connecting with the other world the what is the other world the other world of energy that is around us me as a person has a multiple probabilities multiple lives in the universe so as when we i am sleeping i can be in all the possibilities at a single given point of time there is a possibility that we are living in a hologram and we are also a hologram good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of the life positive show i hope all of you are taking good care of yourself and thinking positive We have a very special guest guest with us tonight. He is uh, Mr. Sunny Atwal, and with him we would be discussing the topic, the secret of occult sciences today. So, as the topic suggests, it's it holds a lot of fascination for most of the people because uh, it is shrouded in mystery, and a lot of myths are associated with it. And we are going to try and bust those myths about occult sciences and lay bare the real essence to all of you. tonight uh mr sunny atmal is an old soul who enhances divine vision through the blessings of shivan shakti he practiced meditation observed rituals and did astral travel from an early age he practices many modalities from the field of occult sciences human consciousness and psychology uh for pa- for the past 16 years he has been on a mission to help and guide people using modalities like energy healing elemental magic hypnotherapy past life regression witchcraft tarot spell casting psychic visions divinations dowsing telling and a host of these things which are considered uh, quite mysterious for many of us welcome uh, mr sunny atmal to this show uh, so i'll begin with asking my first question to you please tell us what are occult sciences and why are they considered so mysterious okay first of all hello to all the listeners of the life positive people and first of all i am sunny atimol and i am just an old soul who is here to learn everything by my own experiencing and the experience of other people your question what is occult science the point is that people think uh, occult science is a new term but they don't understand occult science means something which is not understandable like a human race whenever they don't understand anything they say that thing is a mysterious thing they say we can't understand that that's a uh magic that is a some kind of a taboo so it is termed as a occult even homeopathy ayurved was termed even science chemistry was termed occult once upon a time so in short occult science is a science which is not understood by the common people by the common when the common people does not able to understand what does that thing means they say oh it's a magic it's kind of a superstition once upon a time even a solar eclipse was taken as a oh the sun god is angry with us today the science taught us it's not like that so the occult is just a very simple definition of occult is the thing that common people can't understand that is occult science so but they're also uh, associated with esoteric supernatural beliefs and practices which generally fall outside the scope of uh, religion and science uh religion you know these are again a set of rules uh, meant to kind of take you closer to god and give, and instill a certain discipline in your life and science is again something uh, which uses the science of the modern world rather the laws of the physical world to explain certain phenomena to you whereas occult is something uh, which kind of uh, passes people's understanding because it involves certain elements or certain uh say maybe is mantras or spells if i'm not wrong to invoke certain certain powers uh, in the universe so so the this kind of idol falls beyond the scope of science and religion so therefore i feel that there is a sense of mystery around it 
So can you explain this? Like, is what I'm saying is it right? Is it really beyond the beyond the realm of science and religion, or is it a part of both the uh, aspects of life? Occult is a generally an umbrella term that is used loosely by everybody in a sense when they don't understand a thing. Understand is a very simple thing. There was a time we don't know that two chemicals can meet and create a new chemical, so we take it as an occult. Mm-hmm. In the same way, in there was a time. when people want to heal other people through the medicine but mm. they take it as a occult it's a witchcraft so they mm. used to burn women for that mm. so understand occult is nothing occult is a very umbrella term which is when general public does not understand the phenomena they think oh this is wrong a live example of that you can see mm. i and you are communicating on a video call okay mm. 80 years back if i have told somebody i can talk to somebody on a video call they would say oh you are a sorcerer you are a witch we should burn you mm. but like. today the science has proven that thing mm. it's all about occult is that there is a misconception because uh, people think it's a mystery we can't understand it very few people can access it but mm. people have to understand everything can be proven by the science or by the logical thinking mm. after a proper study so mm. even uh, when we are meditating if you know in today world in the western world it still not has started in uh, india or the eastern world the doctors have started advising patients oh you are having stress you are having any chronic disease please mm. go and meditate please mm. do the yoga mm. and understand these terms were occult mm. once upon a time the meditation was taken as oh you are chanting a mantra what it will going to do to you oh mm. you are sitting in, in front of a incense in front of a water or a element what it will going to do and today when the western science when the western people when the doctor says oh meditate it will reduce the stress if the stress will be reduced your disease will be solved now people say are chalo let's do the meditation so it's all about our conception because we have a limited belief we have a limited system so we termed it oh occult is bad oh witchcraft is bad Yeah, actually, this term witch and witchcraft, which it, it is uh, uh, really uh, shrouded in a lot of mystery, and there's a lot of intrigue uh, surrounding this particular topic, uh, because uh, we have heard that which is uh, the word, the very word which has a very negative connotation around it, and we know that many women have been burned on stake. Uh, even today, it happens in villages that women are branded as witches and they are killed. saying that these these women they uh, in on a full moon night they cast spells and then they unleash evil spirits uh, on the on the villagers and this sickness comes or rather kind of they invoke certain magical powers which uh, gives them uh, say power over others over their minds over their lives and destiny so uh, whereas we see that there was a time which it had gone a lot of bad rap and currently now we see that many people including men proudly proclaiming themselves as witch and uh, also doing a lot of uh, things related to witchcraft there's there are books also where these things are recorded uh, there are spell works which are done so uh, please tell me then what it is is it something negative is it positive because you say that once upon a time even meditation was considered a cult but as far as i know the meditation has to 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 great extent been decoded by the modern world whereas these things are still uh, uh, you know not understood so then what do you have to say about these kind of practices which we do hear about the people they work with candles they work with the energy of the moon they work with spells and it is very mysterious and people look at it with a lot of suspicion so you also say that uh, you have learned which craft what is it uh, what does real witchcraft stand for you have to understand witchcraft was a term which was seen as a negative term mm. but as soon as people start learning about that their mm. fear have started going down away like in a time in 50 years back alistair crowley was a big name who has started the whole phenomena of witchcraft in the modern world mm. he started from europe where he created covens in coven means where more than two people three people join together they go into the forest and they are doing a certain ritual on a moon night or something like that mm. but the point was that people were taking those things as very like they are occult they are dark arts they are related to the satan or they mm. are related to doing wrong with other people 
but as soon as it started spreading people start learning oh this is a good thing we are learning and as the information spreaded more and more people able to understand what witchcraft is like if you will study right now in usa witchcraft is a prominent religion so when everybody start accepting something then the fear goes away because more people are doing it so the fear has gone away oh then the men comes we can be sorcerers we can be witches and but what is witchcraft the point is that what is witchcraft witchcraft is accessing your inner energies and connecting with the other world the what is the other world the other world of energy that is around us like our vedas told us that we are made up of panch tattva air mm-hmm. water fire earth and the sky mm-hmm. the same witchcraft says the same thing we have to worship gods mm-hmm. the elemental gods mm-hmm. when you say elemental magic elemental magic is that when see like you are worshiping a certain god in a same way a witchcraft person is worshiping a certain element it's the same thing so they just believe if they will worship fire air or any element that element will going to come for them and help them it's like same going to a mosque going to a church or going to a temple and worshiping your god or goddesses and accepting and believing that one day i will pray 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 and they will come and they will give me something spell casting is the same thing you are somewhere down the line praying in a certain set of rules mm. so if you go towards vedic rituals there are ways how to do a havan in a same way in a witchcraft there is a certain way how to cast a spell and then why it has so much negativity on its uh, back because people have used this thing in a wrong way but whenever a new thing starts it is always used in a wrong way the main example of that is atom bomb the nuclear energy the humans have used the nuclear energy to destroy each other but nowadays they are using it to create the electricity they are trying to make wealth through it they are trying to remove the poverty through it in a same way if witchcraft can be used in a right way you can access your inner energy and can help yourself and others through that how can witchcraft help in spiritually elevating a person because eventually uh, what we believe in spirituality is that the ultimate purpose is liberation from the cycle of birth and death that is the entire concept around which spiritual practices are based now enter witchcraft which is a kind of about gaining power through the elements and then kind of using it for your benefit or for the benefit of the man kind of course uh, it, it can also be misused i want to know how does it or can it help in in helping human beings achieve their uh, eventual goal of attaining liberation or does it take people away from this goal because it has these uh, powers attached to it the uh, lure of power is there for example if you worship or do certain rituals uh, related to the elements then you do get access to certain powers and then it can uh, become a totally different journey for a person because he might uh, change his path change his route and direction and go in a different uh, direction altogether which is uh, separate from the eventual goal of liberation you know you getting what i am trying to say yeah i am understanding uh, your point you agree that the witchcraft or occult sciences can delude people and uh, make them uh, go a little off track no it can't first of all your question is somewhat wrong because what is spirituality people mm. don't understand what is spirituality spirituality does not mean it will help you to get rid of the process of the birth and life spirituality means going within spirituality means connecting with yourself spirituality means connecting with the higher self uh the birth and death cycle oh that's a very very long path you don't that you is, that is that is but at the same time according to what i understand that it's all about your awakening no if you are kind of not ready to fully awaken obviously you can stay trapped but if you ready to awaken even one lifetime is enough because the it's the cycle which keeps you trapped in maya and once you're out of it then you're truly empowered happy and liberated so therefore how can you know witchcraft i mean is it 
is it a part of spiritual path because uh, in spirituality the eventual aim is the, the supreme the divine okay whereas elements are a little bit kind of you know come below they are like part of the divine but they not not the divine himself and if you are worshiping them obviously uh, there is an exchange of energy as well as maybe you worship or you please them and then in return they give you certain things so that is where my question lies that how can uh, these practices help you uh, in your spiritual elevation the point is that every practice will help you to reach to your goal uh, we have only two goals if we take it as a individual as a universal concept the soul is get, there is a one soul one god you can term it any name you come out of that soul and then the process of life and death starts and there is a moment when you will go back to that in that whole process you are gaining experiences you are learning you are helping the other souls that are have come out of that place in that spirituality occult witchcraft everything helps every experience helps the point is that how to use it when you say hierarchy you say the elements comes very below to the god it's a hierarchy thing okay the point is that we are made up of elements but we have to understand our whole body is made up of element so even if it comes below the hierarchy if we are not in sync with our own self if we do not uh, i am not connecting with my own body how mm. i can connect to the higher body if i am not in sync if i am not happy with my own mm. self i mm. can't be happy with the higher energy so the occult science the witchcraft opens the gate it's like a gate mm-hmm. it's a gateway to the spirituality in a way that we don't understand you have to use that gateway to mm-hmm. enter there and you can use that gateway gateway in any way possible it mm-hmm. can be meditation it can be rituals it can be uh, worshiping elements it can be worshiping crystals you can do anything that you want to do the mm-hmm. only goal is to enter there and when you go there what mm-hmm. happens then the occult science helps you how even a past life regression hypnotherapy eft everything is part of occult because still they can't be understand fully so mm-hmm. when you start solving your problems from mm-hmm. this life or from the previous life you're mm-hmm. working on yourself okay. you're gaining more experiencing okay. and when you're going through that you're mm-hmm. learning more and more mm-hmm. and you're going one step more closer to your salvation which you say getting rid of the life and death cycle <laughs> okay sunny ji uh, i would like to uh, you to uh, go back and remember the first time you were first charmed by this world and what made you actually step into this uh, very fascinating world of occult sciences which is kind of i would talk about it very comprehensively which involves your uh, say even astral travels and meditation and then your introduction to this part so can you just shed a bit of light on your own life journey in connection with the spiritual and occult world what really uh, do you to this particular path uh, my journey started when i was just 4 year old i had some paranormal experiencing that happened with me i have seen uh, some weird experiences that happened like things coming out of the uh, normal wall calendar and trying to talk to me i have visions when i am sleeping and i can see 150 200 people standing around me and trying to talk to me there was a time nobody used to believe me i'm a 4 year old i'm a 5 year old and nobody used to believe me but i used to see the things from quite young age and it continued continued and at the age of 19 suddenly uh, i experienced black magic people tried to hit me with the black magic and because of the jealousy factor of my family thing because of that i learned myself i learned myself that how to fight with those people i learned i relive that memory again and again i i able to understand by accessing my past life how i can fight with these things i remember the first time i had an astral experience um i was just sitting in my room and i can feel that i was not feeling well and i just prayed to the father like i prayed to the shiva and shakti and i said i have no clue what to do with that mm-hmm. and i just closed my eyes and uh it was an experience that i can't term can't put into the words but i sense that i am going uh, down a rabbit hole and i saw the divine and i felt the things are moving around me like the things were shaking around me physically mm-hmm. and from that moment i keep having these experiences i even have the experience where i'm having multiple dreams 
like i come out of the dream i'm still in the dream i come out of the dream i'm still in the dream it keeps happening with me it never stops it only get stronger and stronger and stronger and with that i started learning from around the globe i started talking with people who had those experiences because i always believe if you share experience you will learn more so i started talking with everybody i can from usa from australia from europe from india mm-hmm. and i learned what their experiences are and then i go on into sadhana i used to wake up at 2:30 in the morning i, I take used to take bath at 2:30 it doesn't matter what the temperature is mm-hmm. and i used to take bath i sit into the meditation at 3 am and i am in the meditation till 6 am i used to do it for 3 hours straight and i used to go go into my inner self go into my each chakra see what is happening there how the body works how the energy works mm-hmm. and the point is that the universe works on the funda of the secret mm. the secret maybe has uh, has come now but mm. our vedas told us these things a long long back ago if mm. you will pray from the heart everything will be given you mm. can see that in the krishna bhakti meera mm. she she has no clue how to do a prayer she mm. just know one thing krishna 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 and till today meera is respected only prayer and that prayer is also a spell in a way yes. so the point is that everybody can achieve this and that's the best part mm-hmm. and problem is that there are bad fruits everywhere mm-hmm. there are bad people everywhere nothing is bad nothing is good it's all about intention mm-hmm. i can have power i can have money i can have access to anything but it's my wish how i will going to use that thing i can use that thing to kill somebody and i can use that thing to help somebody just think of a doctor a doctor can give you a life and at the same time can take your life mm-hmm. it's the same thing in the occult it's all about we don't know about occult there are very few people who are practicing in a right way mm-hmm. and when many people will practice that there will be more r and d more research more development mm-hmm. and i think there will be a time when people will able to learn more and more about that mm. so you mean to say that the elements have a lot of magic in them and uh, the thing is uh, we have to become deserving of being able to access those powers which they have within us and this can happen only when we have elevated ourselves from within have earned that qualification and then those blessings will come to us otherwise uh, they will remain as Uh, as elements of water of fire and other earth things. and the sky and uh, you know we would not be able to really fully exploit their magic simply because we are lacking in awareness so according to what i understand is that spiritual growth also means opening up of several other other dimensions in your consciousness through which those elements which uh, you know they which look inert to us they begin communicating with us and also revealing to us their secrets and if we become very really deserving very qualified and actually responsible so we can really up our game as human beings the point what i understand is that so much is shrouded in mystery because of our uh, say lack of spiritual growth and when people like you become actually really qualified because they have the sense of responsibility then this magical world opens uh, and then a lot can happen for the benefit of uh, mankind going to what i understand okay uh, sani ji um, you said that you know you have uh, dreams within dreams and multiple dreams and also all sorts of uh, many mystical experiences have happened with you since you were a child so is it a very scary experience to see that even after waking up from dream you still not out of it and then t- you try to go to sleep again and then again you wake up and the, it's it's a cycle which is going on when you feel trapped i think for any human being it can be a very a scary and suffocating experience but uh for you how it has been and what it has revealed to you about yourself and the world and everything at large it is scary even today it is scary to be very honest with you i just had the same experience like i think a month back mm-hmm. i woke up and i thought i woke up mm-hmm. and again no i was in a dream i thought chalo pinch myself no Again, mm-hmm. again, again. Mm-hmm. It happened four times. 
and the fifth time i was like shit scared i will come out of it or not and finally i able to come out of it but the point is that yes it is scary to be very honest with you and why it is scary because we don't have a books over that we don't have a knowledge over that there's nobody who is discussing that there's a very loose knowledge or oh, something like that happened but nobody knows how it happens how to fight this thing how, what is happening there how what should we do about that and how you can learn about that through experience through talking with people who have experienced this thing even the hollywood has created a movie inception over that but they are very loosely telling oh this happened that happened this happened that happened is it uh, is, it, is it about uh, being uh, under a spell having uh, somebody casting a spell on you because of which you you get an experience like no, this no 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 phenomena which is being revealed to you and you are trying it's a to- phenomena it's a phenomena and why it happens through the experiences i have gained in the last 16 17 years this happened when you are visiting like the astral travel you said astral travel right so what happens we have multiple possibilities multiple probabilities and possibilities of me like me as a person has a multiple probabilities multiple lives in the universe so as when we i am sleeping i can be in all the possibilities at a single given point of time so sometimes when you are in all the possibilities and you wake up in the middle what happens you are trying to come back from all the possibilities back into the body it's kind of an astral experience but a multiple astral experience which is happening because of the parallel universe thing mm-hmm. and the parallel universe thing is a reality because nasa has said it now they have approved that there is a possibility that we are living in a hologram and mm-hmm. we are also a hologram the mm-hmm. nasa has accepted that but nobody see that because it does not Uh, because people can't accept that that we can be hologram we are just a hoax of uh, a probability nobody mm. wants to believe that because mm. we are too much consumed in the money power mm. sex mm. that we don't want to believe that oh we can be just a hoax we are just a shadow mm. who will who want to believe that nobody so it is always shut below the carpet mm. mat bolo galat hai galat hai ji but the point is that these things happen with everybody everybody have out of body experience if you will ask people just ask them one question um, have you ever felt when you wake up that you are falling down have you ever felt in the bad that you are falling down oh ha huh, i have uh, felt it yes, that yes. is a out of body experience right i think uh, each time we are like just just you know falling into sleep our body uh, jogs and we feel that we have yes. that- and then yes. we wake up with a jerk that did i fall and no i am lying on my bed so mostly we shrug it off and we try to go back to sleep and we enjoy a sound sleep but i i don't know mr sunny what you are sharing is really uh, very intriguing yes it is perfectly acceptable that we are multi dimensional beings and we are living in a parallel universe and everything is running simultaneously but most of us don't get this experience we live in a very linear world which is easily comprehensible we can make sense of it because the brain has a limited capacity it will go burst if we are exposed to this uh, multi dimensional mm-hmm. universe at all times uh, but for you to be able to experience it and then uh, be able to carry this experience with you then do you find that it is difficult to come in touch with the reality uh, feel yourself grounded in this universe because you've had such a uh, i don't know what which word to use it's a mind blowing experience to experience yourself in uh, at the same time dream after dream after dream and you're come, trying to come back from all the realities so it takes uh, time it takes time to come back to the reality but when you have experience under your belt mm-hmm. then you can easily do that you just sit in meditation once again you do the sadhana you talk to your god and goddesses you can communicate with them and they will listen to you talk to your own self talk to your own body your body will tell you what to do you know we can solve our diseases if we only listen to our body and people don't understand these things and uh, anybody can have these experience first of all they are not like that only i can have it you can have it anybody in this world can have it they just have to do only one thing they have to shut down the noise not the external noise the internal noise mm-hmm. if you are sitting here and if i say you 
can you be silent for a minute mm. something will keep going here mm. something will keep going here okay and if you able to shut down these two things then mm. the thought will appear i am shutting this thing i am shutting this thing i am shutting this thing that is also a thought uh, so the me, moment uh, being a meditator myself uh, and being in the company of similar people uh, for a long time i do understand that people get a have a lot of mystical experiences uh, in meditation but i also realize that not everybody is blessed with the same kind of experience like experiences differ from people to people it's been so, always ha uh, they always differ and not it's not important that what you are experiencing will uh, be felt by somebody else also uh therefore i think then this this becomes all the more intriguing and fascinating that uh we have multiple uh, experiences of the spiritual kind and each one is so starkly different from another and this universe is so uh mind bogglingly uh, mysterious because it has so much to offer and the human capacity is still quite limited in terms of what the universe has Uh, to share with us because uh, not if, no two experiences have ever been the same and yours is uh, really i think for the first time you're hearing something like that that uh, you could experience yourself in so many dimensions at the same time and uh, uh, still uh, keep a sane head on your body it's i think it can be my mind would blow to smithereens if i had something like uh, had an experience like this uh, to be i'm a science honest. student i'm a science student i'm an engineer by the study I'm an okay. electronics and communication engineer. I know how science works. Mm-hmm. I study related to quantum physics. Mm-hmm. I know how the science works, how the science is evolving, and mm-hmm. I love to read Bhagavad Gita. So I know the concept what the Krishna has said. I love the concept what NASA has said, and I mm-hmm. learn the concept what Stephen Hawking has said. So mm-hmm. I try to uh, learn everything, and from all of those experience, I try to learn. But you have to understand, everybody can do that. It's mm-hmm. all about that. We are so. Busy in our nine to six life, like five days, nine to six, two days party over. As a Stephen Hawking is coming to us, Mr. Stephen Hawking, uh, he also uh, very uh, confidently claimed that uh, there's no God and at least God has not created this universe. That was his uh, very big claim, which is made that God has not created this universe. Now, what do you have to say about that? It is his opinion, and I respect his opinion. No, because you say no that it is very closely linked to the sciences, and he's also uh, Mr. Stephen Hawking also was see, the, universe and see. the elements which are comprised. See the person. See the person who believes in science. They have to see beyond science also. So mm-hmm. he, what he is saying is right according to his mindset, according to his view that mm-hmm. there is no God because for him everything needs to be proven by an experiment. Mm-hmm. So till that thing can't be experienced. there is no god and i respect his opinion but as a eastern person as a person who has learned from the eastern science mm-hmm. i believe if i can't see anything it does not mean it does not exist mm-hmm. i can feel it i mm-hmm. can visualize it i can feel inside me mm-hmm. and at the end of a day it's mm-hmm. all about our own view and mm-hmm. as you said it few minutes back that everybody has a different experience everybody has a different thought process so we all in a collective we are having different experience and the best thing is to sit around talk it around and learn maybe i am right you are right i am wrong you are wrong who knows we all are having a great experience living in this world which is revolving in the sky a revolving stone in a sky that's the biggest magic a stone is revolving in the sky there's nothing around it just revolving and we take life too seriously Asani ji, you also spoke about uh, getting visions uh, when you were four year old, and you were seeing hundreds of people uh, standing before you, not visible to others but visible to you. So, what was that? And were who were those people? Why only you could see them? And what were they trying to communicate? See, the point is that um, there are other worlds, there are other spirit worlds, there are multipolar worlds, like the worlds of um, like. mystical worlds that people don't know about mm-hmm. and somewhere down the line people can't have access to that but mm-hmm. if your vision is more you can see those things if you can hear more you can see that if your third eye is activated you can see more like mm-hmm. we can see in a specific range we can hear in a specific range like a bat can hear more than us a eagle can see more than us everything can see more than us so the point is that we are not using them fully 
so when we will going to use them fully we can do wonders like we don't use our brain fully mm. if we can use our brain fully we can do anything like people have uh, recovered from cancer without any medicine people have uh, recovered from diabetes people have recovered from thyroid they have just allowed the disease to go away how by this and from where the visions are coming from where those thoughts are coming from the universe mm-hmm. at the age of 4 i was still not connected with this earth that much so when i was in a half sleep so these visions generally happens in half sleeps you're not sleeping you're not awake you're half sleep in that state i can access i can see the other world mm-hmm. and when i was seeing the other world the other world is seeing me mm-hmm. and those experiences are very very scary because there's nobody who will going to believe you even if today i say those experience people will take it with a pinch of a salt mm-hmm. and just think if a 4 year old says who is going to believe a 4 year old you knew at that age that even if you shared your experiences with your parents they would not believe you i shared it mm-hmm. i shared it people laughed over me so which uh, which dimension were you were seeing uh, like was it the spirit world or was it uh, you know the world of the angels or uh, the world of the deceased who were trying to work on i have no clue to be very honest with you i have no clue <laughs> you have no idea okay great it was like a mixture of everything it was like every night was a different experience so because you know it's very unusual for any for even a child to get these kind of experiences and i feel that there uh, must be a deep reason for uh, these apparitions to come before you trying to tell you something which they were unable to uh, share with somebody else mainly because you could see them and were more receptive but i think that's a close chapter of your life now and like uh, gone so much ahead uh you also talked about uh, being under the influence of uh, black magic and then you had to uh, get up and fight for yourself what was this black magic what is black magic and uh, why were you subject to this uh, 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 negative experience so early on in your life black magic um uh, somewhere down the line the, when people are trying to use their powers trying to use the occult sciences mm-hmm. to harm you mm-hmm. that is black magic very simple like um, people are trying to kill you or try to make you diseased mm-hmm. by using their powers that is black magic mm-hmm. the same magic can be used for a positive thing but mm-hmm. they are using it for a negative thing it's like sign a sign can be used for positive can be used for negative in the same way they are using certain kind of magic they are using certain kind of practices rituals to destroy you like they are putting few things in your house they are trying to send souls spirits to harm you and things like that so everything can be used in a positive and negative way so they were using in a negative way so it becomes a black magic how prevalent is black magic in today's time do people still believe in it you take the course to it use it or to get ahead in life or to defeat somebody or is it uh, still uh, you know something uh, which only a select few indulge in and it's a, again a very mysterious world not open to normal human beings uh it's very prominent very prominent the point is that black magic has levels even uh, when we are in a house our mother says are tujhe nazar lag gayi hai teri nazar utar dete hain so nazar what is nazar nazar is also somebody is putting a evil eye on you that is also kind of a black magic somebody is thinking wrong about you so it's very prominent the point is that intensity the intensity of that magic if somebody start thinking about you too much negatively you will feel it you will not you will not like their company you don't want to be their friend you don't want to be around them that's the first stage of black magic even a nazar dosh is a kind of a black magic then tot cards come then the thing come where people try to kill each other by using the blood magic so there are certain things that are mysterious to the world but there are certain things that are very common to the world like people trying to harm each other because of few factors they are jealousy money anger and when these factors comes into the play nobody thinks of karmas nobody thinks what will happen to them they just want to harm that person if they can't harm that person physically they started from here uske sath bura ho they start thinking like mentally 
they start giving badduas like what we say in hindi they start mm-hmm. saying oh that person should face uh, the problem that person should fall into an accident that person should have a disease we start thinking that but when it is combined with the spell with the rituals it becomes black magic a proper black magic but it is still a loose black magic when we are thinking negative for somebody so that's I- why uh, it is termed in uh, sanatan dharma that karma is very important what you are thinking for others is really really important so we often come across uh, uh, say you no know, posters and advertisements while traveling by train or any other means of transport no bengali sha baba se milne no sotan se pareshani aur ya aur premi ko bash mein kariye aur apna kya transfer se chutkara paaye is tarike ko kya i just want to know is is there some real black magic happening over there to facilitate all these desires or nothing happens or, nothing or, happens you know, nothing but hoaxes um, used to uh, fool people and make money they are fooling people uh, so many people come to me and they say we have gone to that bengali baba we have gone to that hall we we have gone to this and that and then i say okay let's sit and talk first find out why you are having a problem it's not necessary it's a black magic it may be because you are thinking negatively it may be a possibility because you are not taking any action mm-hmm. you are sitting on your seat you are sitting on your ass and you are saying are mai kuch nahi karunga everything should happen it's an, it does not happen like that mm-hmm. and even if it it does not happen in that way so i will keep working hard without using my mind and i will get success the point is that you have to mix match everything like to make a perfect vegetable you have to put everything in a right quantity in the mm-hmm. same way to have a successful life you have to put everything in a mm-hmm. right quantity but with these ads these thing they are just making people fool they are just playing with your emotions mm-hmm. oh you want this do this i will give you this it does not happen like that if mm-hmm. it can happen they will not put the ad they will invest in the stock market na mm-hmm. they will invest in stock market they will invest in the ipl they will invest everywhere where they knows because they already know what will happen they already can play with somebody's hat they will play with the ambani's hat na ki ambani will come to them and do everything what they want they are just making fool and people don't think from common sense because common sense is very very rare you also said that the black magic is mostly done by people who are jealous of you and yes of you have anger issues or have some kind of inferiority complex yet and if i want to know if black magic is so powerful and it is actually quite prevalent also still there are people who continue to rise and shine in life they through the sheer hard work determination perseverance and application of all their uh, abilities i want to know why are they not affected by any kind of black magic because for sure there must be many people jealous of them and trying to bring them down and what are the signs of that i'm including my next question also of anybody who is afflicted by black magic okay i will answer the first thing um if you have a good aura if you have a good chakra system energy system and you have a luck nobody can touch you no black magic can touch you if you uh, go into the nature if you run if you meditate if you pray if you do few small things and if if you keep helping people around you okay you're collecting the good karmas and that good, good karmas is your protection that walking in the park is your protection when you are walking into the park those trees around you they are helping you you don't even know they are the higher creature they are helping you when you are feeding a a, a dog you are feeding a, a bird they are protecting you that is a good karma that is protecting you and those people who are you saying rising and shining there's a one common quality in all of them they keep trying to give it back to the world they keep trying to help people even if they are doing it for their name but they are helping mm. and when they help they create a protection for themselves and mm. few who don't help they have people who are protecting them they have a whole team of occult people astrologer palmist uh, black magic expert white magic expert psychics to protect them mm. 
to heal them. They spend a good fortune of money on that. So it's depend on person to person. And the second part of your question, how a person can feel that they are under the influence of black magic. Mm-hmm. When the, the first thing, sleeping pattern, when your sleeping pattern is disturbed, when you're not sleeping well, like generally you used to sleep well and suddenly, suddenly your sleeping pattern is destroyed. You can't sleep properly. First thing. Second thing, your mind is not working fine. You're not able to take a decision. Like you used to take a decision, but now you can't take a decision. You're not able to think properly. You keep uh, forgetting things. You keep thinking, when I have said this thing, that is a indication that something is wrong somewhere. So there are a few things, but the point is that you can't see it because only an expert eyes can see that. Mm. You can only see few things. I'm not able to sleep properly. I am feeling irritated. I am feeling angry all the time. All the bad emotions are taking over me. Like my mood swings are happening in that way. Mm. But actually it's happening because of that or because of the daily stress that only a professional person can sense it. So, uh, for example, you know, somebody's uh, life is totally out of sorts and uh, nothing that they do is helping them. Uh, then how to find out, you know, who, who should be the right person to go to in case if you suspect that there is a black magic kind of thing involved because this world is also very, very, uh, I would say shady. A lot of uh, because it's black magic and uh, there are people you know, who indulge in all kinds of uh, very shady things to get their uh, work done. So uh, I personally feel that uh, you know, people, if they, they should stay as much away as possible from this kind of things and this entire world and rather dedicate themselves to pure spiritual practices and obviously accumulating good karma through good deeds and doing otherwise you can get entangled and not be able to come out of it and maybe your life can be put at stake because of this do you uh, agree or you have a different uh, take on this my uh, my view is that the first person see you have a uh, two questions or three question if i believe so the first question who you should go to mm-hmm. the first person you should go to is yourself you know yourself the best nobody else can know that mm-hmm. you I, as a person, know my secrets, my deepest, darkest secrets. Mm-hmm. I know why the things are going bad with me if I will be truthful to myself. If I sit myself and I talk to myself, then half the problem is gone. Then I can find who is right for me, who is not right for me. I can start with small things. I can start meditating. I can start going to the park. Like many people come to me and they say to me, Sunny, kya kare? what we do? I say, Okay, start walking. You can't walk? Okay, go sit in the park. Drink a lot of water. Meditate. You can't meditate? Put the mantras. Put any music you like. You like instrumental music? Put the instrumental music. Close your eyes, listen to that. First thing, be friend with yourself. So that's my first mantra when a black magic or any negative elements attacks you. Second thing, then you have to ask around. Don't go for these ads in the, like everywhere you say Bengali Babas and all of that. Try to communicate, try to find if in your circle somebody has taken a help from somebody, ask them or try to find ways which are more uh, approved. Like I am a science student. So I use everything. When a person comes to me, I give them a science view, a spiritual view and their own view. And then I tell them, don't give me a case. Go back to your home. Talk to yourself. Take a week. Take a two days. And find out. You, am I saying those things are right or not? If I am right, give me the case. Otherwise, don't give me the case. My funda is this. So don't believe me. And second thing. If anybody says to you, believe me. Believe me. Never believe that person. Only believe one person. Your own self. Nobody else in this world. That's, I always teach my all clients, believe in yourself. Don't even believe in me. So that's the first thing. And what's the second part of your question? We spoke about elemental magic and you also talked about candle magic, divination, dowsing. So 
on which principles these things work and can they positively influence the person's life uh yes they can influence positively anybody's life mm -hmm. and principle uh a question which is very very difficult because the it's just like science in a science a principle is keep changing when mm. you're learning you keep changing the principle so in a same way you keep changing the principle in magic because we are experiencing we are still doing the r and d we are still learning so we are still changing the principle the, but still the basic principle is that we have to connect with ourselves and then we have to connect with the universal consciousness mm. that's the basic principle anything else is just a noise and we are trying to explore more and more by each passing day mm -hmm. so um, if a person is praying to the god and i go to that person and ask what is the principle of your prayer mm -hmm. in a same way if somebody is doing a different kind of a science like what is the principle behind that mm -hmm. the every principle is that that we are still experiencing there we are still trying to learn like science is trying to learn we are also trying to learn can what should be the experience take this question up mm -hmm. when we talk of candle magic to ye candle magic mein kya hota hai hum kya matlab jab aap usko karte hain candle magic mein to uh, actually ho kya raha hota hai candles kaise magic kar sakte hain mujhe ye janna hai uh, it's not like that the candles are doing the magic it's like uh, in the same way when you are praying you are burning a in a church you burn a candle mm -hmm. in a temple you burn a incense you mm -hmm. offer the, your offering in a candle magic you are putting a set of a candle like you are lighting a red candle white candle according to the chakra color you are mm -hmm. using the oils you are using the incense and mm -hmm. then you are putting your intentions your prayers to do a specific work it's like a belief system you are doing the same thing again and again and again and again for minimum 21 days for minimum 21 days again and again you are requesting the universe i want this i love myself mm. i want this it's like you're praying the same thing again and again with the belief system 21 days and you're enhancing your prayer by using a certain kind of things like when we do a prayer we can use our prayers by doing a havana we can uh, increase the power of pr our prayers by doing a uh, fasting so it's like we are using the tools So the mm -hmm. candle magic, all of these things are just tools that we are using to enhancing the magic. We are increasing the intensity of our prayer through them. So, is it also a predictive modality where through candles one can predict uh, the future or the new future? What we expect? I'm just uh, wanting to know. No, 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 no. Through candles, you can't predict. At least to my limited knowledge, if anybody else can, I have no clue. I can't predict, and I haven't seen anybody who can predict through the candles. Uh, through candles, you are just using the fire elements. You are mm -hmm. using the fire elements to connect to an element, and mm -hmm. through that, you are connecting to the higher energies that I want this. Then you are praying to your god and goddesses. It can be anybody who you believe in. So, it's not like that. Candle magic is limited to one element. You have to understand that. in candle magic we are using candle fire one element we are using incense air second element we are using crystals third element earth we are the universe is always around us so in a way we are using all the candles uh, candle is just a name but we are using a elemental magic and enhancing it by using spell casting according to the authentic hindu scriptures when we are talking of elements so we we are invoking the the god connected to that agni tatva agni tatva jal tatva vayu tatva varun dev aur vayu dev aur yes yahi yahi sab hai aur yes bol chuke hain that when we yes. uh, agni so it is the agni dev we are calling to uh, when we are talking of uh, say uh, invoking the power of water to so invoke kya varun 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 dev varun dev, varun dev. और जब एयर की बोल बात करते हैं तो वी टॉकिंग ऑफ द वायु देव पवन सुत भगवान और दिस इज द हां एंड देन ऑब्वियसली व्हेन वी आर कॉलिंग फॉर द एलिमेंट ऑफ अर्थ सो उसके लिए धरती मां ओके द स्पेस एंड देन फॉर स्पेस हु इज द प्रेजिडिंग डेटी इंद्र इंद्र ओके 
So now I'm like able to get in that it's nothing but you know the same thing which we've been using and doing for yes. millennia. It is. It's now come back to us in the same form which is we call elemental magic and instead of you know taking see, the basis of those see, uh, presiding deities so these elements we are kind of saying that we are uh, you know worshipping this particular element or that element. See the point is that if we look at the humans when they entered on the earth the first time they don't have have a communication they don't can't talk they can only see the elements mm-hmm. so the names comes year later on mm-hmm. all of this is just elements you can say it in hindi you can say in english you can say in sanskrit you can put any ta- name tag to it shiv baba ma shakti divine father divine mother give a damn what you mm-hmm. name them there's only one thing there is a one entity one power which is taking care of everybody mm-hmm. that make sure this complex body structure works a mm. heart keeps beating till from the moment we are born till our death mm. and science still can't figure it out everything we know about our body only 15 or 20% mm. we know about our oceans 5% mm. we know about moon 100% but we know about our own oceans 5% so science is a developing tool it will keep developing and one day the things that you are talking to me today and you are saying oh this is occult or oh, this is magic tomorrow there will be app for it who knows who knows who knows okay so does uh, occult also involves uh, working with spirits uh, if yes and how safe is it uh, should it be done should we be invoking these uh, beings from the spirit realm who are no more a part of our reality uh, who may be not as ascended as great masters are but they can still come to our uh, you know aid when we need to and what are the dangers involved in it yes you can invoke spirits you can make them work for you yes it can help you in so many ways yes it can destroy you in so many ways but answer to your question is fire is a very good thing okay you it can give you the warmth it can cook food for you and at the same time it can burn down your house mm. so should you use the fire or not we must but with caution mm. people only those people are allowed to play with fire who knows how to play with fire if mm. i give a child fire what will happen in a same way calling spirits is only to those people who can handle it nobody should call them if you can't handle it it's a very very dangerous act it really affects your karmic cycle it can affect your whole life because spirits does not follow the human laws it's playing with fire and nobody should play with fire people do deja vu oh sorry uh, the chit thing they keep write the name ujo board ujo board and they play with that and then they come to me we have done that now our life is fun because you are invoking somebody who is sleeping peacefully you are trying to poke somebody mm-hmm. and nobody should poke a bear mm-hmm. nobody should poke a bear if you are entering into this thing if you are invoking spirits you should know how to handle them and if even you have 1% doubt that i can't handle it don't invoke them and first of all everybody can't invoke them very few can invoke them you have to have lot and lot and lot of experience to invoke them there are tools through which you can connect to them but they backfire and they backfire in a very very bad way so i advise everybody please don't invoke them first thing don't go on the internet and find out the spells to ca- <laughs> invoke them and use it you will be in mess your life will be in a mess uh, my last question to you so what was should be the best advice which you would like to give to our listeners tonight uh, with regards to occult sciences i will say I- read about it talk about it don't make an opinion before ha- before having an experience learn read talk to those people who have experience and don't shun anything 
that you haven't experienced yourself because there was a time when people like me were burned because we said oh this disease can be cured there was a time people like us were killed because we said oh this is not a god's doing this is a this is a disease there was a time when we say when a scientist said we can make a new chemical and they said no you are wrong you are entering into the god's world pope said the church said you are doing wrong and they killed us so today the new generation should learn and they should try to understand that they can do anything but have a proper knowledge and guidance and meditate listen to your own self and smile life is not a thing to take it seriously because what's the use to be serious you are just here to have an experience everybody will die everybody will die thank you mr sunny for this really in an invigorating session tonight i think uh, no i was also unaware of so many aspects of human life uh, involving the metaphysical world the spirit world and the occult world thank you so much i think uh, was- many many eyes must have been today about a very mystical aspect of our lives i'm sure not many are qualified to enter it and play with it a uh, very few deserve to to doing it but yes all of us can uh, try and know more about it instead of shutting yes. ourselves and uh, shutting this entire world from our eyes we can kind of be a little open minded uh, yet i think it is more important for us to know whether we have a real calling for this world whether we should be doing it because it involves tremendous amount of self responsibility to be playing yes. with elements to be playing with the occult world and to be rather not playing but i would say to be uh, experimenting with it are there any questions yeah so sunny mentioned about the chakras and of course uh, we read about the chakras all the time so i want to know whether it is something that can be only experienced uh, by the person or is there any scientific uh, uh, you know measurement or scientific uh, way to Uh, find them or see them um energy chakras you can only feel it but the point is that science is still experiencing with that you can see the there is a aura cameras that have come that can tell you that you have a specific aura that can tell you how your energies are working but still it's a learning art and the energy grid energy point the science has said that there are some energy points on our body but it does not understand the chakra concept it's still a loose concept according to the science and according to the medical science but uh, many people have experienced that when they meditate when they revolve their chakras it really helps them in their life in their health thank you okay. so uh, as we as you were explaining about the occult and the you know how to elevate spiritually so uh, what i understand is uh, this is one of the way of uh, elevating our self uh, spiritually but at the same time when you talk about the black magic that again mm-hmm. uh, you know it's a next thing that people do uh, when they grow spiritually so isn't it a contradicting like you are growing yourself spiritually where you have to be pure inside but at the same time when you get those powers then you are using it for the negative things so mm-hmm. i mean how is it possible i am not able to relate this thing first of all people who are elevating spiritually should not do a black magic as i said there is no magic with the color like right? black white it's all about intention if you are truly spiritual you will do not want to harm anybody that anybody means even a small animal so if you are truly spiritual you don't want to harm anybody so you can't do a black magic but still people do the black magic because there is always bad fish in the pond there are few people who use the power in a wrong way it's the same thing if somebody has a gun they can use it to protect a country or they can come and become a terrorist and try to kill the innocent civilians so in a same way magic is available to everybody the higher energies are available to everybody it's all about responsibility how the people will going to use it and if they will going to use it to harm somebody that means a black magic they are 
thrown away like the universe does not like the acting if you harm somebody universe does not like the people who do the black magic their karma goes into the downward directions they have to face the consequences one day the only problem is the timelines because we want everything to happen in this moment and the universe does not work on that quanta universe take its time for us 70 80 years of a life is a big thing but just think a universe which is billions and billions of year old 70 80 years even a thousand years is just a blink of an eye so it will going to uh, affect that person who is doing the black magic but nobody knows when and anybody who is rising on the level of spirituality on the power if they are truly spiritual if they truly believe in divine they will never ever try to harm anybody and if they are doing it they are not truly spiritual according to me uh, my question right now uh, is to sunny ji because i remember him uh, speaking about uh, you know how people with stronger aura and balanced mm-hmm. chakra system are less susceptible or maybe not susceptible to black magic <clears throat> in this case mm-hmm. as being parents you know and when you mm-hmm. as as you also said that they are always a bad patient about how do mm. you you know protect your family because you we do not know when we come across up people like this and how and it's not always easy to avoid them mm. so mm. how to keep your children protected because we don't know how their chakra system is working how well uh, balanced is their uh, are their chakras and they're still young you know do you get my point Yes I got your point so first of all you have to understand the kids till they don't hit the puberty they till 10 12 11 their chakras are quite high their auras are quite high because they are not uh, they are in a way they are under the protection of the divine so generally the black magic and all these kinds of thing does not happen on the kids but if somebody broke that law and try to do that magic they have to suffer in that life only first thing second thing how you can protect your child children your families and everything you can protect only yourself you can do your own prayers your own healings your own meditations that will protect you but if you put the intention if i am doing a prayer if i put an intention i want my family to be protected then you are giving a part of your energy to them so that will help them it to help your kids that will help your family to protect and besides that you have to find out what kind of people are wrong for you and try not to talk to them it's very clear and you have to have a clarity and courage because we know ourselves what oh, this family is not good for us those people are not good for us but we don't have the courage to say no to them because what the society will say what the family will say what the relatives will say but the point is that to have a clarity and courage is a main thing what is more important to you have your priority circle in psychology i always teach everybody to have a priority circle a priority circle is a thing in which we try to find out who is our top priority and if your top top priority is your kids your family will you going to see them or the society ask yourself besides that pray prayers have a lot of powers pray for yourself pray for your kids it will help salt in the bathroom like you can have a bowl of a salt in your bathroom that removes the negativity you can have a salt near if you are experiencing that my kid is having some kind of problems is not able to sleep is uh, thinking that oh maybe my child is having a bad nazar buri nazar you can have a bowl of a water put a sea salt or himalaya salt in it keep it at the bedside in the night flush that water do it for 6 7 days continuously you will see the change Okay. Anything else? Thank you so much. That really helps. Thank you. Welcome. So, uh, we'll take leave now. Thank you so much, Anirudh, for coming uh, to the show tonight and uh, enlightening so many of us uh, about uh, a very mysterious aspect of our lives. Thank you so much. I'm sure okay. it has opened many eyes and actually empowered us in many ways. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome.